I was once in Milan in a dinner and uh, I just uh, were introduced to Robbie Antonio and uh, we find many coincidences because uh, we belong from contexts that are very similar in a way because Mexico and Philippines have uh, some similarities. So uh, we get along really well and we thought that was extraordinary uh, useful to try to put together our uh, own capacities to try to explore uh, the possibility of collaborating in a specific project. Well, uh, ever since the first conversation with Robbie, I was very interested in exploring the possibilities of how you can design a sustainable villa that uh, have the capacity of adapting to different contexts. That solve some of the most basic questions of how you can actually uh, uh, solve the problem of living. Uh, how must we live? What type of architecture must develop uh, to solve the basic questions of how to live, how to reproduce, uh, and how to create your, your own family. For example, uh, what we have been working together with our team is the possibility of how architecture with the current technology kind of overlaps with the industrial design and try to produce something that in a way is connected with what Jean Prouvé was doing in their specific time and that vision of how you can actually modulate uh, the, the structure of the, of the villa to have something that in a way learn from what is happening in other industries such as the car for example. Uh, flexibilities that usually are not so common in architecture that in this case will be very attractive so that you can almost go to a showroom and almost choose the different materials you want to apply to your own to your own villa, no? almost with the same experience that you have when you go and buy a car or buy a computer or a laptop. No? Ever since I was uh, in my early 20s, I was uh, in Mexico City and I was always fascinated by the house of Luis Barragan uh, because it was without any doubt the most important architectural piece in my country. And so I always was fascinated of how a uh, very small scale of architecture can really develop uh, all the way through a specific uh, architectural language. Uh, so, since that moment, uh, I was very conscious and aware that even that I was going to one day design an airport, like we are designing the biggest in the world today, uh, together with Norman Foster, I was always going to be very interested in designing uh, small scale projects, um, particularly with the current technology, it offers a, a bigger challenge how the, uh, the possibility of applying uh, materials that we know for a long time, for example glass, but that uh, now with technology you can develop uh, uh, in so many different variants and possibilities. So uh, for us this project is about collaborating with the many engineers that has been proven and investigated the possibilities of sustainable housing prototypes, uh, in other words the zero footprint a phenomenon uh, that must be applied to all single houses in the future, uh, uh, but also in the conversation with Robbie about how you can actually do an architecture that is adaptable to different contexts. Uh, we didn't stick the development of the project to a single program, but in the contrary that we create a, a, a matrix of possibilities of how the project can be adapted to different programmatic needs. So, it can, it can evolve to have uh, two bedrooms or one single bedroom or, or becoming a studio or becoming a gym plus a studio. So the possibility that the project is flexible enough to prove that you can use it by uh, having uh, different needs and applying to different contexts.